Hello Chess Buddies, welcome to Amateur Chess University. This is your presenter Shiva and today we will analyze a very interesting game that took place in London event 1882. Yes, it was an error without the chess engines and relying on complete human calculation and risk. Here we had two strong players going against each other. Joseph Henry Blackburn from England who was nicknamed Black Death, a very strong player in the 19th century and he was up against neighbor George Henry Mackenzie, a Scottish born US chess master. So without further ado, let's head straight into the game. Joseph here has a white pieces and he begins with e4, e5 by black, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4 by white going for the scotch game and here pawn captures on d4. Knight captures the pawn on d4 centralizing itself and black here plays bishop to c5, attacking this knight twice. White here has a couple of options, it can either play c3 or play bishop to e3. White chooses to go for bishop to e3. So after bishop to e3 by white, Black Queen jumps into f6 again targeting this knight at d4 as well as attacking this pawn at f2. White here plays c3 defending the knight. Black plays knight e7 connecting this knight as well as preparing itself for the castling. White plays the madness variation of the squash game knight to c2. Here white is asking the black whether you want to capture my bishop at e2 with your bishop at c5. Black simply declines says no thank you very much I will go to b6. If you want you can capture my bishop at b6 with your bishop at e3. I will capture your bishop with my a7 pawn and give my rook full semi-open file. Now since the black bishop has left this diagonal, white develops his knight by playing to a3, going to g6 by black, again attacking this pawn at e4 as well as attacking this pawn at g2. Now since g2 pawn is attacked, it also pins the bishop at f1 from further development on the diagonal. White can defend this pawn at e4 by playing the queen to either d3 or f3. However, if black pins the knight to e5, then it will target both the squares. So white goes for the safer option f3, creating a pawn chain and here black plays knight to d8, trying to develop the knight from the king side, queen to d2 by white, providing an additional support to the g2 pawn, black plays knight to e6, knight to c4 by white with further ideas like c5 from where it can target both the pawns at d7 as well as harass the queen at g6. Of course, black figured out this able plan. It plays pawn to d6, preventing the entry of this knight to the e5 square. Now here, knight captures bishop at b6. Black captures the knight with the a7 pawn, providing the full same pawn file for its rook. Bishop to c4 by white, attacking this diagonal. And here, finally, black castles. It would have been better for the white to castle in this position. However, it plays g4. Knight to c6 by black with further ideas like a5 or e5. Now here white castles on the queen side, knight to e5 by black, attacking this bishop at c4 as well as this pawn at f3. With both of them hanging in this position, white has to make a move. It played bishop to e2. However, a better idea in this position would have been to play queen to e2. Now if knight captures a Bishop, Queen captures the Knight, Queen to f6 and here we can play Rook to f1, defending this pawn. But Bishop to e2 move is a huge blunder by White because now it leaves the pawn at a2 hanging. Black doesn't immediately capture it, it plays Knight to c5 first. The idea here is now capture the pawn at a2 with your Rook and then give a check, thereby picking up the queen in the process. So white understands this situation, it captures the knight at c5. Bishop captured, f4 by white, attacking this knight. Knight moves back to c6, f5 by white, targeting the queen and queen to f6. g5 by white, again targeting the queen aggressively and now queen plays e5, attacking this pawn at e4. White defends it with bishop f3. Now finally, Rook captures the a2 pawn. King to b1 by white attacking this rook and rook runs back to a7. Knight to e3 by white with further ideas like c4 or g4 and attacking this queen. Black has a similar plan. It brings the knight to a5 and targeting this c4 square and attacking this queen. Now since the c4 square is targeted by the knight, white plays knight to g4 attacking this queen. Queen moves back to e7. Now since the knight at a5 is targeting the c4 square, white queen moves to g2. Now this position is completely losing for black, but there is only one move 
that saves the game for black. So now you can pause the video and figure out what is the move that black has to play to stay in the game. So if you have figured out the move that black had played in this position, congratulations. That move is king to h8. The black king here has to say bye bye to the g8 square. Staying in that g8 square would have made life very difficult for the black king and would have been repeatedly attacked with the discovered checks. So let's see what happens if king doesn't play h8. In this position, it's not such a good idea for black to play f6 or f6. Because if black plays f6 pawn, the knight captures the pawn at f6, giving a check to the queen. And here, pawn captures the knight and pawn captures pawn. Now, in this position, black has a discovered check as well as losing its queen. If black plays h6 in this position, then we have knight captures h6, giving a check to the queen. Then pawn captures the knight, pawn captures pawn, and here we again have a discovered check. Now in this position, the black king is only left with two places, h8 or h7. And no matter where it moves, it is getting checkmated in the next move. So it's not a good idea to promote either f6 or h6. Well, if queen tries to play something like capturing the pawn at g5, then white will play h4. And queen cannot move to any of this above position because it's all blocked by the pawn as well as this knight. If queen tries to move to h5, then it's not a good idea either because now knight will play to f6 again giving the check to the king and here the bishop will pick up the queen so after h4 if queen tries to move to e7 then we will play f6 pawn captured on f6 then we have a dub check with knight to h6 and only there is only one place the queen can go that is a h8 file now we will move the rook to g1 and there is nothing that can prevent the white from winning this game. So yes, that is the reason why the king to h8 is a very very good move and it is the move that saves the game for the black. So after king to h8, white plays f6, queen to e6 by black, pawn captures on g7, king captures a pawn on g7, white plays a rook to d5 and this move completely loses the game for white. Black has to find a winning move in this position. So you can pause the video and figure out what move black has to play to win the game. So for those of you who are able to find out the winning move, congratulations. The move that black played in this position is knight to c4. The importance of this position can be felt only towards the end of this game. So after knight to c4 by black, white plays queen to f2. Now here, black makes another significant decision. It captures the rook t5. Why was this move played? Well, black wanted the pawn at e4 to be displaced from its position. It succeeded in doing so because now the pawn at e4 captured the queen at d5. Now black brings out its best weapon, the bishop to the f5 square and gives a check to the white king. Well. What can the white king do here? Well, there are not many positions it can move to. If you try to move the king to c1, then black will play rook to a1, giving a check. And this will result in a checkmate because the white king cannot move to the d2 position as the knight controls it. So after bishop to f5 check, the only option available for the white is to sacrifice its queen queen moves to c2 so after queen to c2 black plays rook to a1 again giving a check now there is no other option for white king except to capture this rook at a1 now here bishop captures the queen at c2 and it was in this position on move 32 that joseph henry blackburn resigns the game as there is nothing more to be done we all know what is going to happen next the rook is going to jump to a8 and it's going to deliver a checkmate to the king and there is nothing white can do to prevent this from happening. So that is the game and I hope you all enjoyed it. There were several blunders by both white and black. But black held on during the pressure moment. And it was daring enough to sacrifice its queen for the victory. The interesting moment of the game to me was the usage of the light square bishop by both white as well as black. 
while the light square bishop of white was more active it was more defensive than attacking in particular sacrificing that a2 pawn which was a significant blunder while the light square bishop of black didn't come into the game till move 30 it made a significant difference with that check so the lesson we learn here is it doesn't matter when you develop your pieces as long as you do it at the right time well if you find any interesting weird or strange moment in this game feel free to comment below would totally love to read it thank you so much for watching wishing you all good health and take care